IBC itself has a set of strength design load combinations and two alternative sets of allowable stress design load combinations. The two, all two sets are called basic and alternative basic. Uh, you uh, need to, uh, I, I need to point out very emphatically that the second set of ASD load combinations, alternative basic, has never been in ACE 7. ACE 7, the committee actually uh, is kind of against that set of load combinations but they continue in the IBC. They actually come from the 1994 edition of the Uniform Building Code, which remain unchanged in the 1997 edition of the UBC. Uh, with one minor addition, we are looking at the UBC load combinations as alternative basic ASD. And uh, as I already said, ASC 7 has never included uh, that set. The code also used to have a so-called special seismic load combination set. Uh, that has essentially now moved to ASC 7, section 12.4, and they are called load combinations with overstrength factors. Section 16 of 5 of the code will send you there to the load combinations with overstrength factor of ASC 710 for the design of certain structural elements. So, so if if you uh, start with section 16 of 5 of the code up front in section 16 of 5.1, you will be sent to the uh, load combinations with overstrength factor of ASC 7 for the design of certain structural elements that are crucial to the load path of the structure. Uh, this is Ali Haji Hashemi, and today I will provide you with three load combination design examples. Uh, the first example is extracted from one of our most popular uh, pub publications authored by Dr. Ghosh and Dr. Dasgupta, where you can refer uh, if you want to see the, the example and, of course, a lot more in full detail. In this example, we are looking into a 20-story building, uh, which is symmetrical about both principal axes and utilizes uh, a dual shear wall frame system to resist uh, lateral forces along each axis. Having the seismic excitation in Y direction, uh, we will determine the design forces for the shear wall on line two at the first story, uh, for the column B2 again at the first story, and for beam B2, C2 on the second floor. The building is subjected to the service load as presented uh, on this slide, and we will reduce the uniform light load uh, according to the 2012 IBC section 1607. This table shows uh, the effects of uniform dead and uniform light loads uh, for the shear wall. And to get the final effects of the gravity loads for the shear wall, we need to add the self-weight of the wall as well as the weights of beams framing to the wall to the PD values uh, from the table. We also need to add the effects of non-reducible partition loads to the PL value of the table. The same procedure is used to calculate uh, gravity load effects in the column B2. And for the beam, we are using the simplified equations of uh, AS, uh, I'm sorry, ACI 318 section 8.3.3 for an, for an interior span to determine uh, positive moment, negative moment, and shear value. Now let's move to the seismic analysis of the building where we are using a model uh, response spectrum analysis as presented in ASC 710 section 
based on the uh, results of ETAP's eigenvalue analysis in Y direction, we need to uh, include uh, three mode shapes of the building, which add up to more than 90% of the total mass participation ratio.